of Face the Facts. I am Nick Face once again. We welcome you to a revamped edition of Face the Facts. We've got some new added additions that are into our shows from now on. To my left, making his second appearance now on Face the Facts. We count every appearance okay. that you right. get on there, right. so you need to get up that list. <laughs> Tom Smith, welcome back, Tom. We have a lot going on in our lovely world of uh, Boston sports, national sports as well. We want to get everything covered for you today. We want to lead it off this morning with the Boston Bruins. The <laughs> Boston Bruins just continue to play fantastic hockey. They continue to roll. As we talked about on our last program, typically over the years, Bruins haven't been the number one lead on our sports show. They just have not. The Bruins have completely taken over that lead. They are the hottest team in Boston, even with a Super Bowl team going to uh, Minnesota, yeah. which is amazing yeah. to me. And they just continue to play great fundamentally and sound hockey. Uh, it's, I, I mean, I can't believe how good they're doing right now. 18 straight now with getting at least a point. Uh, I mean, the last regulation, the last loss they had in regulation was on December 14th. Um, so that's just insane. Who was that against? It was against, actually, the Washington Capitals. Ah, uh, that's right. That's right. It yep. was. That was a bad loss, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that wasn't the Seven best to two. game. Yeah, something like that. Yep. It was terrible. Yep. So now they're 14-0-4. Um, and, I mean, their hottest line just keeps on rolling, too. Pasenak, Marshawn, and uh, Bergeron. Well, they have taken a little bit of a hit because this past week there was an elbow in the New Jersey Devils game. Exactly, against Brad Marchand, who's a continued defender, yep. and he was suspended for five games. What are your thoughts on that penalty? I think the only reason why... And suspension, excuse me. Yeah. I think the only reason why he got suspended was because he's a repeat offender. I agree. The way I saw, when I looked at the replay, there was no way he had any intent in elbowing Johansson in the face. And he's a little bit of a retaliator, too. Yep. So there's two players who have a little bit of a history right there going at it. Would you change the style on how Marshan plays hockey? No. I wouldn't I, either. I, I think he, his playing style has improved since he first started, like we discussed last week. Um, and, I mean, it's just, it's just unlucky and a uh, bad hit to the team. So he has now four games to go because we, he already served one of those uh, suspension games, which was earlier this week, and that game... Uh, was against which team again? The Ottawa Senators. That was Ottawa. That was this week. And they got another 3-2 to two victory against yep. Ottawa. Tuesday night, they that was a game against New Jersey, New Jersey Devils. And they also got their win as well. So good overall job for the Bruins. They continue to roll. The All-Star break is fast approaching, is it not? It starts tomorrow. Actually. It starts tomorrow. Yep. So you Skills get a little bit of a breather, tomorrow. which is a nice thing. There's only one all-star, which is, I think, preposterous. That's Brad Marchand, who will be able to attend the all-star yeah. game. Yeah. No Bergeron. What, is that like a travesty or something? Um, I think part of it is because the all-star game was in Tampa, and Tampa is also doing, playing fairly well this year for the first time in, in a while. Um, so a majority of players on the, on the Bruins all-star team is, uh, is from Tampa. Right. So, I mean, it, it's tough to see a guy like Bergeron not make the team, especially with the season that he's had after missing, mm -hmm. like, the beginning, like, third of the season, or quarter of the season. Beginning parts of the season missed, and now he's already at 20 goals. The entire line is at 20 goals. The, the, should they both have at least 30 by the end of the season? Should they all? Yeah. That's absolutely. not out of the question, the, right? The way they're playing right now, they're definitely going to be getting the, That line, the passionate Bergeron, Bergeron and Marshan line has just been spectacular. It's been yeah. one of the best 80, in the league. 86 points in the last 25 games now. Yeah, Tom had a good stat on that. 86 points in 25 games. Which That's, is insanity because there is no other team that has ever done that, I don't think. I've never seen that in my life. We wish the Bruins all the best because they continue to just dominate. Out on the ice, and we hope that domination continues. Yes. We do have a Super Bowl upcoming, folks. You heard it here first last time when we did our program. I said Patriots, and I said Eagles. That's what I wanted. I said I wouldn't be surprised if the Minnesota Vikings get it. I was looking back at what my expectations were from the last Super Bowl, which was against Atlanta. Is it fair to say that 
I was more nervous last year with the Patriots facing Atlanta because they've seemed like a very good opponent versus this year. Am, am I not looking at Philly enough? Am I, am I not? Is Philly a tougher opponent than Atlanta? We'll go down to basics with that question. I think the Patriots need to have a better first quarter if they want to make it closer than they did against Jacksonville. That was a question at a press conference this week to Belichick about why do the Patriots struggle out of the gate in the first quarter of a Super Bowl? And he's like, oh, that's a great way of starting the day off with negativity. I mean, if that offensive line needs to be ready. They got to set the tone. They need the offensive line for the Patriots has to be ready for that it's defensive almost like line against the they're, Eagles. They're looking up at the stars and all the fans. And, oh, we're here. We're here. Yay, Super Bowl. They need to hit the grind right away when it starts. And I'm hoping that that happens when we see them next Sunday. Uh, I mean, I think in all the Boston sports, every team, whenever we make the playoffs, the Boston teams have the most players with the most experience in playoffs. Shouldn't that be an X factor? You would think. That's what I would think. You would too. think. And I think that's what helped them helped motivate them after halftime last year in the Super Bowl against Atlanta to come back and win after going down 25 points. Before we get into kicking off on, the, on our Super Bowl with everything, we're kind of we're kind of there already. We need to backtrack a little bit because we talked about the Minnesota and Eagles game. We have not got a chance to really look at the Jacksonville game. That was a game that I'm sure most fans did not sit in the same seat that they started out with when they watched the game. I can am tell guilty you that, of that happened at my house. I am guilty <laughs> of that. I changed my seat. I went back to my Super Bowl seat where I saw them come back and do their thing. Lo and behold, they come back and they do it again. So it's the lucky chair. I, I mean, I guess. I mean, I was, at a, I was working a birthday party for the, the majority of the uh, first half. I got home. Got ready to sit down and watch the game with everybody else that was there, and uh, they started playing better. <laughs> the first half was definitely dominated by Jacksonville. Oh, absolutely. Blake Bortles and the offense from the Jaguars were rolling to a point where you had to look up and say to yourself, who is this team? Blake Bortles is going to beat you? I am sure, and I am confident, that that's one of the things that Belichick said in the locker room at halftime. Absolutely. You're letting Blake Bortles do this to us? <laughs> Are you guys out of your mind? Yeah, Something about the Patriots, when they turn it on for the second half, they're a different team. The adjustments that were made at the half completely changed the landscape and the outcome of the game. Uh, I mean, it comes down to leadership. And we talked Solid. about that last week with, with our discussion about different coaches and their techniques on what they do with the teams. Yep. Um, I mean, it's not very often that you get to see the Patriots come back from a, against a team like that, and then you, they pan to the sideline, and you see Bill Belichick jumping up and down with a giant smile on his face. <laughs> Was there any point throughout the game that you said maybe we're not going to the Super maybe the Patriots are not going to the Super Bowl? Is there any point in the game that you said that? Yeah. You did say that. When we were down twenty to seventeen. Okay. And Jacksonville started to play like they were playing in the first quarter again, and then all of a sudden it just stopped. And we scored a touchdown and all of a sudden My one moment that I thought it was over was when Deion Lewis fumbled. There was a play, there was a pitch back to him from Amendola, and Amendola fed it off to Lewis, and the ball got stripped, which I thought was still a questionable call. That was my point that I said to myself, maybe, maybe it will get over. That's where my seat changed, I'll tell you that. My seat changed right at that point. But then the defense got a quick three and out, yeah. and then the offense came about, and Tom Brady was able to deliver right down the field. The biggest play in my eyes, which was the pivotal reason on why the Patriots – won that game, was the third and 18 completion that to was Danny huge. Amendola. That, was, that huge. was huge. But you also had one of those in the Super Bowl, which was, once again, to Danny Amendola. Let's talk about him for a sec. Actually, not for a sec. We can talk about him for as long yeah, as possible. We, we could go forever on him. What has made Danny Amendola playoff Dola? I think 
I think part of it is, I mean, you lose Edelman at the start of the season, not even in the start, at the start of the season, in preseason. And Brady has a ton of targets. But then when it gets down to the playoffs, everybody's like, oh, we got a double, we got a double team Gronk. We got to cover Hogan. We got to double team Cooks. So then who does that leave open? It leaves it Amendola open. It does. And he's, he's come up huge in the playoffs every single year. That and catch that he made in the end zone, just keeping his feet and everything in there, that takes some skill. It was Julio Jones-esque. Yes, it was. He's a very underrated player. I remember when the contract was signed. It was a five-year, wasn't it like $80 million or something? No, not, maybe not $80 million. No, but it was a lot more Five years, $30 million or something like that. And people gone. were like, what is this? What are we doing here? Why did you go with this? Because you got that to was owe it the year. Josh McDaniels. That was the year when Julian, uh, not Julian Edelman. That was the year that Wes Welker went to the Broncos and he signed his two-year, twelve million dollar deal or something. What a move! What a move bringing him in because it was the right move. He oh. needed a year to get himself together. He had to figure out how to get healthy. I think we owe a lot of credit to TB12 yeah. for uh, for the work that he put in. By staying on the football field, it's worked. It's proven. And it's able, been able to make Amendola, who used to be class Amendola, right. to clutch Amendola now. Yeah, and I mean, we can thank Josh McDaniels for even bringing him to the mm-hmm. team in the first place. Because he was an ori- Danny Amendola is originally a, a St. Louis Ram. Right. Yep, right. St. Louis Ram. So we hope Amendola has some more great plays and some moments in the Super Bowl. But overall, for his performance in the game, he, he was the MVP of that game. Absolutely. Yes, Absolutely. Brady led them down the field and all, but it can't happen without the play of Amendola. That 30 and 18 catch was the big reason why we got that touchdown. Now, Brandon Cooks has been a player that's had his ups and downs throughout the season. But I will tell you this. He totally did show up in he the game. He steps up when he needs to. What he's really good at is he is really good at selling the penalty. If somebody has a pass interference on him or something, you know. You know. And he, he does a heck of a job doing that. The amount of yards that they were able to pick up because of uh, the penalties committed yeah. from Jacksonville was pretty amazing. Yeah. That set up a lot of plays where Brady could fire in and score in the touch. It the was, end what, zone. three or four that pass interference that got called against, yep. against Jacksonville yep. on Cooks? Yep. Um, it is a little nerve-wracking, though. You, you know Tom Brady's got Brandon Cooks. Deep and he throw. He That's just what I don't like. Brady likes to air it out to Cooks, just to draw the penalty once in a while, and he does it because I think he's trying to air out to get that penalty and all. Cooks really hasn't been able to connect with Brady on the deep ball though, pretty much any time this season. Well, because they've been double team defenses have been double teaming them. They have, so that's something that. If you look at, you don't really want to see Brady throw it too much on that unless you know it is going to be a penalty. Right. So that's something that I would look at for Cooks to improve upon as we get, as he gets more, you know, kind of acclimated to the system that's that that's in play. Anything else that stood out from the Jacksonville game? I just looked at preparation as the big reason why the Patriots won that game. Yeah, preparation I... and just being focused. I think as long as they watch the tapes on that and they see what they did wrong against Bortles, I think Nick Foles is in for a whole heck of a lot of trouble. I could say the same. I could say the same. Let's move forward. Patriots will be taken off. Is it Sunday or Monday? I think it's Monday. Mostly. I'm assuming it would be Monday. I think it's Monday that they'll be taken off to Minneapolis. That's where the Super Bowl will be. It's going to be against the Eagles, like we said. We have a lot of things to look at for this Super Bowl because this would be the sixth Super Bowl under the Brady-Belichick era. Eighth. Eighth, but six going for the win. Right. That is correct. What expectation do the Patriots have right now as they prepare for their now eighth Super Bowl under, this, under the Brady-Belichick era? Is this a big one? I think it's big. I know they're all big. But I think this one has a little bit more of a meaning because of the potential de- uh, potential departures that we have for the Patriots, meaning Josh McDaniels, Matt Patricia, maybe some others as well. I think it's big. I mean, it, it's not only going to be a record-setting 
game um, if we win. But we're losing two of our best, two of the best coaches that have been on the team. Reminds me a lot of 2004 when the Patriots again played the Eagles. It was when Charlie Weiss, Romeo Cornell, and some other coaches from that staff parted ways. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what we see again. It's going to be a 2005-esque year for next season. You'll still have Brady. You'll still have Belichick, but they're going to have to get used to a new system with other people that are in place. So the comfort feel is not going to be there. You're going to still have the majority of the same players. Right. It's just going to be new voices being heard. The system that's in play won't change with Belichick there. It's the people that are calling plays, offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, that have to kind of get familiar with everything. For defense, I look at Brian Flores, who's the linebackers coach right now, to step in and be the defensive coordinator. Yeah, especially since Arizona hired a head coach already. Yep. So he's probably most likely. He's most stay. likely staying and going to be the defensive coordinator. So that's a little that that helps the Patriots there. Who are they looking at for offensive coordinator? Um, I'm hearing Greg. What's his name? From the is it Carolina? Belichick is very friend. Uh, Greg, um, I forget his name. If I can think of it as the show goes on, I'll let you know. But I believe that's one name that's being floated around. Yeah, I could think very I well be one too. of the one of Belichick's kids. They might be ready. Steve, uh, Steve Belichick is on the staff, and he has another one that's on the staff as yeah. well. They could be getting themselves set to be able to step in and be and be uh, offensive coordinator and all. So we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens there. But I think that the system that's there is going to be fine. It's just making sure those people that come into play are up to speed. Right. Up and to I, speed. I think, I think uh, having Flores is, will be good um, because he's been there a few years yep. under Patricia. So that one I'm not too worried about. It's the uh, offensive coordinator. That's what I agree. Game plan for the Eagles. What is the game plan? How are they going to attack them? Rush the offensive line. Okay. <laughs> Make it harder for the offensive line to protect Brady. So do you see Dion Lewis being a big factor into this game? Absolutely. Okay. Him and James White. Because he really wasn't much of a factor in this last game. They kind but of He didn't need to. I mean, he Jacksonville kind of took away the run. Yeah. And he didn't really need to be. I mean, but if you look at the last Super Bowl against Atlanta, what did Atlanta do? They, they took ran. away the run. Yeah. There was really no blunt because he fumbled and everything. James White didn't really run. He was there for the pass. So will they make Brady pass? Most likely. If Brady is able to pass, we know the story. Right. Brady right. will step back and he'll deliver. Right. So in a way, if you want to take the run away, fine. Go right ahead. Because it, it doesn't really affect It doesn't us. affect anything. So the game plan, I, I personally think the Eagles are going to have a very tough time against the Patriots team. And I'm not trying to do it, trying to you know, boost them up because right. we're homers. We, we want the Patriots to win, of course. It's the fact that the preparation, the experience, they've been here so many times. They know how to do this. This isn't Atlanta. Atlanta was a very tough opponent for the Patriots. Let's be honest here. It was tough. Seattle was a tough opponent in yep. 2014. I don't look at the Eagles as a very tough opponent. I will also look at Pete Carroll as a coach from Seattle who's been there, done that. He knows how to win at the big stage. And he worked at, with Bill, Bill Belichick. And Atlanta's too. coach as well, who had been at three Super Bowls in the past year. <clears throat> They've been there. This guy, Doug Peterson, or Peterman, whatever you, Peterson, he was coaching high school football a year ago or two years ago. I don't, I, I, and this is the same Doug Peterson who was the Kansas City Chiefs offensive coordinator who has no idea how to clock manage. No, he did. I if mean, that strikes the fear of God into you, I, I don't know what does, folks. I mean, th some people out there are just saying that Philly whole, Philly's a better team than the Patriots. They need to wake up because all they're doing is, is splurting out lies. I mean, they got lucky against Minnesota that they didn't even have to manage the clock last week. So No. It, it's <clears> – <throat> and we all know. We all know the Patriots and Brady and Belichick really know how to manage that clock. 
because we you got a minute and a half left, and I mean they didn't even need to use a timeout in the second half. No, they didn't. They really didn't. Which is incredible because well, I mean Jacksonville didn't really know how to manage the clock. It, it, we got we, it turned out that we got lucky with that, but I mean usually in games like that we would have to use at least one or two timeouts. We want to get into a uh, we want to transition here. We want to let our folks at home know that. We now do a Facebook Twitter poll of the week. It's brought to you by Sports Zone 101. Okay, we all know about Sports Zone and all the programs that we run from everything. The question is this: We're we're predicting that the Patriots are going to win the Super Bowl. So what we want to know is who who do you think is going to be the Super Bowl MVP? If you think it's A. Tom Brady, you're going to select that. If you think it's going to be B. Dion Lewis, you're going to uh, select that. If you think C, it's going to be Danny Amendola, pick that. If you think D, it's Rob Gronkowski, go right ahead, pick that choice. If you think it's somebody different, please let us know. So you have A, Tom Brady, B, Dion Lewis, C, Danny Amendola, D, Rob Gronkowski. You can go on to Facebook and check on whichever option that you'd like on that all this week. We hope you enjoy that. We hope you enjoy... Uh, that, that special poll that we'll be doing. We're going to be doing a little bit more of that as we continue on with Face to Facts. Looking back towards the Super Bowl, any other special things that we should be focusing our attention on? We know Justin Timberlake is going to be doing the halftime show. I'm sure all the, little uh, high, all the high school girls are going to be all happy about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's a good performer, I will say that, and an actor, so not yeah, bad on that. I would, say, uh, I would say look for that commercial with... Uh, Brady versus time. Tom versus time. It's a good time to transition into talking about that. Now, I'm glad that you mentioned that. We had the Tom Brady, uh, Tom versus time Facebook video come out, which talks about a little bit about what he does to prepare for his games, his life. Um, it gave a little bit of a, a journey back towards Super Bowl last year against Atlanta. I thought it was a very nice piece. Yeah, it was put together I really well. thought it was put together pretty well. Did you get a chance to look at it? Yeah, it did. It. I mean, okay. it was uh, it was different. Um, it's just it's it was really put together well, and um, it was good to see that it wasn't just like Brady and what he does. And it was Giselle. It was his kids. It was doing family time. What he does on the field. What yep. he does off the field. So I mean, it, it it's it was a different video than most athletes would put out there i was uh, most impressed with the therapy and the massaging and everything that he does with guerrero i mean it was pretty intense from what you saw from yeah. the video with everything and you can tell that he he does trust guerrero with all of his work that was the one takeaway that i had from the video the diet that he uses you could see a lot of the the uh products and everything that he uses. I thought it really showed a lot about who Tom Brady is, almost like a robot. Yeah. He is so programmed to, this is what he's going to eat, this is what he's going to do, this is how he's going to do it, and this is how he's going to continue to play football into his 40s. One of the things that I loved in the video, the one piece that I loved was the part when he was outside talking about how he's 40 years old and he can still throw that blankety-blank football. As hard as possible. That was pretty cool because he's right. Yeah. Most players, when they get to the certain age that he is, they can't even throw the ball strong or anything. Well, he still can, and he throws it pretty nice. Yeah, it, it's very rare that you see a wobbly pass from Brady. Very rare. So that was another takeaway that I had from the video. I also hated how it, at the end, it has a nice... Well, they tried to transition us into episode two, and it leaves with the Patriots getting their loss to start the season. Um, was that against the Chiefs? Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. So it leaves you with kind of a cliffhanger as to when episode two comes, what's going to be the next part. I wanted more is what, yeah. is what I did. I wanted more. It was about a 15-minute piece. If you haven't got a second to take a look at it, I strongly suggest you do, but you're going to be yeah, it was, wanting more yeah. when you, when, after you've finished. I mean, it was there was the commercial. It, they aired part of it during the, one of the commercials during the game. Yep. So I mean, they will also they be doing thing, that during so. the Super Bowl. They'll be taking some advertising time for people to see it as well. I think it's a great piece. 
Tom Brady should be definitely congratulated on the amount of work and effort he puts in. So people need to stop treating it as a joke. I mean, yeah. let's be honest here. The TB12 method works. Yeah. So people, if for any athlete that doesn't want to use it, I don't know why you wouldn't, but you got to be dedicated. You can't be going out at 1 o'clock in the morning having drinks, right. a.k.a. Aaron Rodgers, and saying that you use it, but at the end of the day, you go and cheat. You can't cheat. You've got to be dedicated. And I think that's what Brady's trying to preach yeah. and trying to tell yeah. everybody, if this is the method you want to use, you have to be as dedicated just like I am. It's a lifestyle change. And it takes a very tough person, mentally tough, physically tough, to do it. Right. So that's why Tom Brady is a one-of-a-kind person because he's the only one that's really been super dedicated to it that we know of. Yeah. Some it, it Patriots just, like Gronk and Amendola use it, but we don't see it and hear enough of exactly the process that they're using. But when you, when you hear dedication in the NFL, what player comes to mind? What's the fir who's the first player that it comes to, to mind? It has to be Brady. It has it's, to be. I, Whether you love or hate him, it's, it, it, open up your eyes because this is, what, this is what he's done. This is what's worked. And for those that want to continue to doubt it, Live under a rock. Yeah. And that, I mean, there's not any, I can't, even like as a Patriots fan, there aren't any other players that I can really think that say dedication to me. So, I mean, yep. I, I could say I'm a, I could say I'm a Patriots fan and still I, there's no other player. Nope. The other documentary that's coming out, basically that Tom versus Time is a documentary. Um, it's a part of a series. I believe there's eight episodes, six to eight episodes, so definitely check it out. Um, again, it's only on Facebook, so you've got to go on and log in and check it out. The other one that's coming up is Bill vs. Bill. That is the Bill Parcells, and that is the Bill Belichick documentary coming out from my favorite TV network on, on Earth. That is ESPN, of course. Um, I think I will be watching this piece because it's, um, from what I've been told, it's, a, it's an excellent look at how... Belichick was kind of the student of Parcells, and they were together for a good, about, good amount of their careers. So I'm very curious to see what the story is yeah. and how it, how, it come out, how it comes out, and I'm definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, it's, I'm intrigued, too. I mean, I've, I, mean we were, I was born in 91, so I, I was still kind of young to We didn't understand. really see much of Parcells. Yeah. It was more 80s, 70s, 80s. Yeah, so it, it's... Early 90s with him. Different. Definitely is different. Uh, we are going to wrap up our show. Uh, we just want to make sure that, again, you take a look at our Facebook Twitter poll of the week, um, who the MVP of the Super Bowl is going to be. If you think it's A, Tom Brady, you're going to select that. B was Dion Lewis. C was Danny Amendola. D, Rob Gronkowski. Or E, somebody different. Which very well could be. could be. You never know. Just like could be another Malcolm Butler surprise. Could be. <laughs> could be Dorset for all we know. It could be. <laughs> could be. Could very well be. It could be J um, uh, Dwayne Allen too. Yeah. <laughs> or James Harrison. Could, could be. It, 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 any number of players. We know we have some Celtics and some Red Sox things that are uh, will be discussed. We'll talk about that in our next program. We hope you all enjoy the Super Bowl. We will hopefully be able to celebrate with you when it is done with new hoping. hats, new shirts, and everything. Always hoping. So go Patriots, and we will see you soon. I am Nick Face. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you later.